Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly ask you to please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the carvers. My name is Michael Mondragon, and I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Let's meet the Carvers. First, he is a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hey, Maddie. Hey there. Up next, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts, and he is the 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins, Paul Dever. Paul. Hey. hey. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. And our guest carver tonight is a potter, illustrator, and sculptor creating one-of-a-kind oddness from Carrollton, Georgia, Ron Free. Welcome. Woo! Welcome, Ron. What's up, Ron? Hello. Hello. And after a very successful debut, the wheel returns. Oh, no. Oh, no. The wheel. So, Paul, uh, do you want to let Ron in on what the wheel exactly is? Sure, no problem. Well, Ron, what we have here is... Some call it the, the hallow wheel. Uh, we call it the center spinner and whatever else you can think of. But what's going to happen is we're going to pick on the first spin, we're going to pick the character that we're going to carve. And on the second spin will be the emotion that the, um, the hoozy badoozy is uh, feeling at that moment. Did I explain that well? I feel as though I explained it really well. I, I, feel, I feel great about it. Are you with me, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> Two spins to see where we're going. For That's these. right. Well, the, the hella wheel, the sinner spinner. Let's see what the wild, wacky, wretched witchcraft, the wicked wield wields. Wow. I'll say that a hundred times fast. Yeah. I say that. <laughs> Nobody practiced that. That's wow. great. Well, right. well, first, our, our ceremonial oh, toast. Geez. We have That's to we have to get it together here because right. oh, yeah. uh, we always toast before our our we put out True. our art. We so, almost um, before having our toast. That's just that's, right. That's em that's embarrassing. Well, hopefully, you have a, a really great uh, craft beer from uh, Georgia, uh, Ron. What, what do you What do you have? Uh, not for Georgia, unfortunately. I, I'm okay. not as cool as the rest of you guys. Uh, but I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you. <are. laughs> I got. I got. I have a Sierra Nevada hazy oh, little thing oh, IPA. Yes. Uh, this is like. Oh, that's uh, a good one. This is a six point seven uh, percent alcohol. So, yippee. Yes. Yes, I like that a lot. And uh, well, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you, Matt, but the dogs are home. I think they might be stealing your beer as well. Uh, Paul, what do you got tonight? Oh well, tonight I have a definitive brewing company from Maine. It's called Zoom. This is an imperial sour ale with, ale with raspberry, tangerine, lemon, and vanilla. And it's a um, not too bright there. It's a uh, good enough. Yeah. And it's nine percent. Nine percent. Nice. Oh, that's, it's got a very nice color to it. That's impressive. Well, well, well. You got the whole orchard in that thing, it looks like. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it should be called the kitchen sink. <laughs> Matt, what do you got tonight? I, I, I went and grabbed um, my final harpoon, um, and it's the Duncan. Um, you know, I got to kind of help represent for the East Coast uh, since, uh, you know, Duncan. I actually had Dunkin' Donuts this week. Um, I haven't had that in a long time, so I figured, why not drink Dunkin' Donuts in harpoon beer style? So, ah, nicely done. Very well, how about you, Nick? I have the uh, UFO pumpkin that you actually had last week, Matt, and uh, mm. I found out it's actually a pumpkin and yam beer. Wow, uh, which I've never had before, and uh, oh. five point cool. nine uh, ABV and a twenty IBU. So. Um, this is not my go-to, but it may quickly become uh, the season for the pumpkins. So, um, yeah. so cheers, cheers everyone. Guys. Thank cheers, you for joining guys. us, Ron. And uh, we look Thank forward you. to hearing more about you. Now, um, are we going to spin the wheel first or, and then let, oh my, uh oh, Paul, Paul might be falling oh, down. That's dangerous. <laughs> you have to get to, that's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, cut him off. I'm yeah. Favor. Favor. <laughs> well, yeah. You know what, Mick? I, I think because last time it went so well with people having a little bit of time to go get their their pumpkin, the way you sometimes can determine what that 
thing is going to be by staring at a pumpkin. So let's spin the wheel now, and then we'll give people a little bit of time. Ron doesn't have the ability to go get a pumpkin because he's got his clay pumpkin. Yes. In this case, but <laughs> I, I'm more interested in what he's doing anyway. So just just get the wheel over with, and we'll get a, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. We, we gotcha. Say, Paul. So let's do it. Uh, let me go back here. There we go. So uh, we're gonna go to the wheel. Ta -da, ta -da. The wheel of destiny. The wheel. All right, are we ready for our first spin to see what exactly will be carbon? I'm trying okay. not to break it, but. Please, no Frankenstein. Oh, it's an org, and that doesn't exist, so that's perfect. Or an ogre. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, or whatever. Okay. Or an org. Okay. So Here now, okay. This, this org is going to be. <laughs> Come on, org. Sad. A sad <laughs> ogre. <laughs> perfect. Wow, I, I like that. I really like that. Oh, perfect. all right, Ron. I, I, I'm going to throw it to you, Ron. What do you think? What do you think of a sad ogre? I can see it already. I, I love it. Exactly all right, what right I'll on. Do. So that's right. that's cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, I got to think. Am I going to? Are you going to go, Paul? Are you going to go uh, pumpkin or uh, squash? Ooh. I think I'm going to go squash. I'm going to go right. for it. Okay. We got to. We got to. So Mickey, you want to do? You want to, I don't know. We we have the five minute countdown. I guess we can just kind of keep an eye out. We'll just give ourselves a little bit of minute. Oh, look at that! Way ahead of time. Yeah. Nice. Great. Nice. It's nicely done. All, All right. So fun. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna get the uh, the countdown here for everybody to get their stuff together. So I will put it on the screen. Here we go. Okay. So we have a little bit of of time, and uh, oh, look at that. And wow. a clock, a countdown Ooh, clock. Really? Ah, nice. So for those of our pals at home, and I know there's a, a few of you out there who are running to go get your pumpkin and probably a beer or two um, and some tools, whatever you have, obviously. Um, so we got a sad ogre. Right? Sad ogre. <laughs> no shrek. Depending on, depending on what part of the country you uh, pronounce that. Uh, or, 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 I guess, or yeah, you're, you're, you're <laughs> of I got confused. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. Writing stuff down is yeah, that's that's tough. It's hard, yeah. man. Um, but you know, while everybody's grabbing their stuff, before I start carving, because I think I have my pumpkin ready, but I'm just I I can't get more fascinated by what Ron does. I'm going to throw something out there to the group because I, I, I got to, I got to say that I've been inspired by Ron for a long, long time. And, um, if you, the big Duluth, um, I only know you as that for the longest time. And then, <laughs> and, and then now I know Ron free and I've gotten to meet him. So this is, this is a, a huge treat. And, um, and I want to well, say, thanks. yeah, and I couldn't be happier. And, and I, you'll certainly, we can't wait to, to find out all about your process and everything, but um, I'll, I'll throw it right out there. If you guys see stuff that's Ron's um, from years back, and then you look and you say, hey, wait, that, the eye on Matt's pumpkin from two years ago looks like that guy's eye or the mouth or the nose. It's, it's a complete um, a piracy. I stole it from Ron. So. <laughs> yeah, a well, big inspiration. So, so I'm just glad you're here, well, my thanks. friend. No, that's great. Thank you. Here, here, it's, I second that. It's kind of amazing. I, you, I guess you don't realize, you know. I mean, you just do your stuff and throw it out there. So it's uh, it's cool. It's cool. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah. I admire what you do as well. Trust me. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks. I personally can attest for that. <laughs> so, so what's your what's your background, Ron? Uh, illustration was my, uh, you know, major in college. Uh, it was, it was something I had wanted to do for a long time. Uh, you know, life happened. <laughs> uh, I kept doing it, uh, you know, uh, as my, at my leisure and things of that sort. And, uh, I ended up in, uh, sales jobs and things of that sort, but ended up, uh, meeting a guy who uh was had just learned how to make pottery and uh he said hey you want to try this out and i'm like really uh i don't know it, at first it was kind of like you know i don't know about 
making bowls and plates and things of that sort? Was that a, an exciting thing for me or not? But uh, I gave it a shot. You know, it's uh, the, uh, the art of throwing pottery, making a ball of clay into a form uh, is something that I thought, wow, that's pretty intriguing. Let's, let's give it a shot. And many years later, actually, uh, it honestly takes a while uh, to learn that process. And, yeah. uh, then I said, well, let me see if I could kind of incorporate my illustration with the pottery. And, uh, not only that, but, uh, Southern folk art is a, uh, is a big thing in the region that I, that I'm from, uh, uh, you know, making folk art face jugs and things of that sort. So, uh, I was intrigued. I was like, wow, let me see what if I could make something like that myself. And, uh, but I wanted to do it my way, of course. Uh, well, mission accomplished. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're uh, amazing. Well, thanks. Thanks. You know, and, and what I do in, in the interest at that point is to kind of make something functional. You know, not only can you uh, look at it on a shelf, but you could drink out of it or, pour your alcohol from it uh or whatever else you know so as one does as one now, does Mi now mickey we definitely have some some pictures of Ron's yeah work, right yeah. so once uh once it starts counting down i can actually pull some of those up because there's some amazing things and um but you you actually found a way to make it functional as, as well so that's very yes. impressive yeah everything that i make well 99.7 percent is all functional oh. wear I make shot glasses, uh, mugs, uh, jugs, and things of that sort. That's kind of my, what I'm known for doing. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, so once um, you make the form, oh wow, look at that. Yeah. Um, once you make the form from, <sighs> yeah. It, what 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 typically inspires you? Because I know you've got the the process about the eyes and the teeth and some of that stuff. Um, you know, we can we can touch on, but but what what gets you that devil face? I mean, like what. What goes through your head? That um, is it just because? Are you using any kind of reference? Or are you just kind of this is this is kind of how I feel? Or I'd love to know that part. Well, I'm sure subconsciously there's a bit of like my anxiety. I will say probably lives in a lot of the pieces that I make. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, I don't know uh, people I've met uh, throughout my life okay. subconsciously. I really don't make it a point to go. Uh, you know, hey, let's make something like this. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll do illustrations and and then kind of work off of that. But oh, a lot okay. of times it's just it's just what I call the style that of my illustrations and yeah. into my sculpting. I just try to kind of incorporate those kind of looks, emotions, feelings, uh, and things okay. of that sort. So. Yeah, you know, I, I think you could have you could have clearly you could have been a dentist. Your your the <laughs> teeth oh um, you do are like you know awe inspiring, but I, I, you know I'm maybe an orthodontist because they're not always that straight. But you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look at teeth that. are fun. Teeth are fun. I've uh, you know it's just kind of wanted to develop something my way, you know, and it and that worked for me. Yeah, and so you know, um, it was a. Uh, I don't know. It's a it's a great fun. Uh, there is a element of, uh, I guess, craft and skill of actually learning how to use the potter's wheel, which is very relaxing, very uh, therapeutic, I'd say, uh, sure. to do that. So that's a that's a fun element to it as well. But uh, really, the excitement comes when I can sculpt because I'd rather sculpt than anything else. You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just me. <laughs> Wow. Now, guess touching back on the teeth, is that yes. something that you do? You add them in after? Does that make it is is it an easier way of doing it, or do you actually cut them in as you go? Uh, no, no, I add them during my process of uh, of sculpting into the into the piece itself. Um, I use I use a number of different bodies of clay uh, to kind of make the look that I want uh in that and of course everything that you see on the outside is glaze uh instead it's not paint it's all it's all uh basically glass and pigment okay. you know wow. uh the challenge of that is 
uh, the color that goes on the piece is not what you get after the firing. You got to figure, you got to know that it's, a. Uh, it's it's that, about doing it a trial, lot. Trial and error. Yeah, I was going to ask you. That's a ton of trial and error here, because if you want to get a nice deep red, yeah, you, you you may you may do three of them or four of them that are like two fire engine red or two two brown or right. I mean, you gotta. Wow. There's a lot of te a lot of test pieces that are made, and okay. sometimes and sometimes even then you can run across situations where it doesn't work out like you expect, and sometimes yeah. magic happens in the kiln oh, and yeah. uh, something you get that you didn't expect. Uh, some of the glazes that you see like on the pieces itself, like especially on the top, some of these glazes will move. So oh, you put them on really? there at one point and it runs down when the high temperature of the firing is going on. So, uh, so yeah, that's even another ha big hazard because it can mold itself to the shelf that it's firing on. <laughs> and then that's a whole piece that you've spent probably two days on that's gone. Wow. Yeah. So we, we do have a question. Um, how do you yes. make them so you can drink out of it? And it's like, obviously use a, a kiln. Uh, yes. But, but yes. is there um, a special, like, do you put something on the inside uh, to? Um... Uh, no, actually what it is, is this, uh, this clay body is stoneware. And I take it all the way to 2,235 degrees wow. Fahrenheit. Uh, okay. And it converts the clay actually into stone. And it, it will not allow moisture or liquids to pass through that. And also the glaze also inside that also prevents that from uh, occurring as well. So it's How a layer of glass on top of a layer of stone. That's so... Wow. And, and, and if you want to know, like, what, you know, right, so this is, you know, the raw form on the left, and then the yes. finished part, but, um, I mean, what a metamorphosis, like, this is incredible, you know, and, and you probably have to plan it all out as well, right, it's like, you know, where, you know, how, how much is going to be held in there, how big it is, and stuff like that, there's so much, right. like, planning in this. Yes, yeah, a, a lot of times, you know, once you kind of sculpt the form and get it to the point that you fire it uh the first which is called the bisque fire uh you'll end up with uh, a, a piece actually that will look like this uh which will be oh, wow. Oh, wow. basically basically <laughs> like what you have this is pre-glaze uh so okay. this is not a completed piece moisture will liquids would pass through this piece uh, it's only taken up to about 14 or 1500 degrees Fahrenheit at that point, but it allows you enough to be able to put the glaze on top at that point and build up on that. Uh, and sometimes I'll fire multiple times at the mid range, uh, to be able to get to the look or the transparencies, uh, of the, uh, of flesh. If you really think about it, you know, it's, you know, it's, Flesh is not one color, you know, it's, it right. requires multiple layers to be able to so, achieve the look. I'm, I'm, in, I'm enamored with, sorry to interrupt, I just, I'm staring at oh, this, the, the, because I know that, you know, a, a, a typical um, clay sculpture, non-fired, um, yes. or even or even post-fired, or even a, a, a piece that's acrylic or something, they'll do layers and layers of paint on it. But yes. you're talking about the layers uh, to get the nose red, to get the to get the under the eyes a little bit darker. You're talking several firings over and over and over to get, uh, to get the but effect? But potentially, yes, yes. Wow, yeah. wow. You know, and it may go in there if it doesn't look as the, the right, well, look like I want it to. I may have to refire yeah. it again, you know, to Does that damage it? the Does next time. Does that damage it if you're refiring it? No. Multiple, no, okay. No, no. Okay. Now, if it has a glaze on it that moves, or runs, yeah, that can be a problem oh. because it moves further <laughs> down the piece. Uh, ah, okay. Or, you know, so that's fascinating. Yeah, it's crazy to think that glaze can run. Like, yeah, that <laughs> red. That is just crazy. <laughs> so on, on the on the back that isn't red, are, are you just doing kind of a? Um, um, it looks like it's kind of modeled, or you've got like some kind of cool colors in there. 
to make it well, that is that a different type of glaze, I suppose, right? That's right. It's a different type of glaze. And actually, it looks like the glaze that I have on this is something that moves. So it r has run down the piece. Oh, okay. Somewhat. And that's made on purpose. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. And wow. uh, I'll show you a piece I have right here where, uh, oh, where it actually ran off and stuck itself to the shelf. And you can see this oh, yeah. white. Oh, yeah. You had to pull it away. So, you know, it's a piece like this that I really – it holds uh, prank brushes now because of that. So <laughs> that little imperfection. Yeah, I'm a perfectionist. I gotta say. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and, uh, crazy. Wow. Oh my God. See, it's so imaginative because I mean, you're you're taking, it, you're, you're taking a vessel, you're, you're twisting it, maneuvering it once it's in that soft clay form, and then just right, just adding and making those amazing shit now now i've noticed the teeth and i know that yes. there's a pretty pretty severe um not severe a uh, detailed um uh, to get porcelain teeth like that uh, i'm sure there's a, a quite a few steps and a lot of a lot of work um yeah are, do you make the teeth ahead of time or do you just do those at, by the piece or are you making a, it depends get... it depends okay. on what it is you know if i want to achieve a, or if i plan ahead which is typically not <laughs> you know okay. uh, to be able to do something <laughs> like here, that here. you know it's uh you know in a lot of ways it's uh like what you do with the potato teeth you know it's uh, right. a lot of, lot of uh similar uh kind of ideas now they're not glued in because uh the glue would just burn out uh okay. in the kiln you know and sure. things of that sort so uh but somewhat similar yeah yeah um okay but uh yeah as you can see, these are my these are my clay pumpkins. Uh, these are my pumpkins, I guess. Yeah, this is your raw your your uh, raw form before you start carving into it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna do a mouth, let's say you got a sad ogre, for instance, and uh, you know he's bumbling around through your mind. Do you, do you start with the, when you you start with depressions in it because I know you have some mouths and you still want to make it a usable vessel, right? So you're not gonna right. poke through like we would. Potentially, no, you don't use actually, it. what's your actually what I will do, and you'll see right there. That's just I'm just kind of indenting into the clay, pushing into okay. the clay to kind of make that uh, where the where I would think the eyes would go. You okay, know, uh, something of that sort. And I, also, the reason too that I don't make it with a spout already attached is I can go inside the the piece and press out as well as in. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So I, so I can get that uh, kind of, uh, you know, way to, uh, to kind of manipulate that form. Paul, we got to get pumpkins that uh, you can push from the inside back out. <laughs> I'm working on it. Thank you. Um, what would you compare to the consistency for like the layman? Would you compare it to the consistency of like monster clay medium or Chavant or because it looks really pliable it is and depending on how dry the piece is that's that's a big thing uh i have not used any oil well i take that back i have used some oil based clays uh but i i'm so used to water base that's kind of what i've stuck with if you will uh the uh there is a oh gosh what is it called uh wed clay Wet yeah, wet clay. Clay. I've, I've yep. played with that before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's that's the same consistency as what you would have. That has glycerin in it, I guess. Uh, the the wet clay does, so it doesn't dry out. Uh, my understanding is theoretically you can even bisque fire wet clay. Oh wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. And and when you just, when you say bisque fire, this is how much of a layman I am. I I, I know is oh, that is that a temperature? Is that a temperature like a specific? Is that a first firing? Is that uh, what they call it? Yeah, that's a first fire. That's a first fire. Uh, here's an example. Uh, if you have these places that have people to come decorate the pottery, uh, that you go in, you decorate oh, a pottery, yeah. and they fire. Yeah. That's right. bisque square right there. That's what that okay. is. That's okay. that's that's what that. Uh, it, that probably typically is earthenware, but uh, yeah, but it's that in between phase. That's super helpful. Uh, okay, yeah, I know that. I know exactly. Yeah. My kids have done that stuff many times. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my so, grandmother yeah, used to actually have a, she, my grandmother had a whole studio with the kiln yeah. in the basement back in the 80s when that a lot was, of people, when were, that was really did, popular. Yeah. They had forms they poured molds into. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Slip molds. Uh, is that what they call it? Slip molds. Yep. 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 And see, that's one thing I've never done. And, and, you know, some people ask, you know, would I do that or things of that sort? I've never felt like that was something I, my, my purpose is I try to make, something unique every time every time you know, yeah. you know and and you know if you're buying a piece of art it's uh i kind of think of it as kind of like hey you're buying a unique piece you know you're not buying a print right <laughs> so, you're buying art yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, you know and that's that's kind of my um reasoning for that let's put it that yeah makes total sense so, so I, one I, of the one of the things that that yeah. I mean, growing up, I mean, I didn't yeah. go to I, I I didn't take a formal art school, but like yes. growing up, I you know in uh, grade school, high school, and everything, every art yeah. department had a kiln, and we yes. we always went through our our clay, and then we fired up the kiln and stuff like that. I'm not sure if they they do that anymore. In fact, I take that back because my son, who's 18. Um, yeah. actually did a clay piece and he, he oh. loved it. He loved cool. it. So it's still, it's still in, in existence, but nice. so, but, but I, I figured when, when it, coming up in art, like pottery didn't really speak to me because pottery was just like, you know, it was boring. It was like, you know, it's like something to put, you know, some flowers in or, you know, when I, when I did painting, it was always like, you know, you have to learn yeah. with the grapes and, you know, right. the, the, you know, the whole thing. Um, were there any artists that inspired you back then to do what you're doing now? Or is it something that you kind of just blazed your own path? Well, I will say this. Uh, there is definitely, uh, Good question. at the beginnings, it was kind of like in pottery, it was kind of very, and my pieces were very crude. And, and I started uh, experimenting, making things that were similar. I knew about the folk art look and things of that sort. But yet again, I was trying to do my own thing. Uh, but uh, there are some definitely artists that I know now uh, that uh, I've been inspired by and, and look at now that do something similar in some in some ways. Uh, to what, uh, there's a gentleman that lives in Florida. Uh, his name is uh, Ron Deline or Deline. I forget which way it's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> but uh, he... He does absolutely fabulous stuff. You know, he would be considered, uh, I would, we would call him the godfather of a, cont a contemporary uh, face jug, if you will. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, wonderful fella. I know him. I've talked to him on the phone and things of that sort. And uh, I would say he's, uh, he's a huge inspiration for me uh, in, in, uh, and has been very complimentary to me, uh, though we don't do exactly the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, inspiring to see his work, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, there's definitely others. We, I have, uh, at least in the early part of the 2010s, uh, I've met some other guys from all over the, the country that were uh, doing similar uh, uh, kind of things, not exactly the same, but uh, you know, and then that, and that was kind of a, a, everybody had their own little take on what they wanted to do and the contemporary uh, work on that. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. It was kind of inspirational to, to kind of go forward from there. So, and uh, there's collectors. I have uh, a number of guys uh, that's like in the, the Carolinas and the uh, Georgia and, and other places too uh, that are just, they collect face jugs and they like to buy from artists they know. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to, to, uh, to uh, be a part of that kind of world as well. So I want to be part of that world. I think I might start collecting. <laughs> they're the coolest. They're not really are the coolest thing. I, I'm so jealous of I get so lost in the process that it, it almost uh, deters me from trying where it's you need a kiln. So now I got to meet somebody with a right. kiln or I got to join a pottery shop 
I got to get the right kind of clay. I need a pottery wheel. I'm like, this is a lot of stuff. I got a tool right here and a piece of produce. And I'm going to have my baby and do that right away. Well, admittingly so, it's an expensive thing to do. I'm not going to yeah. lie. It's, there's a lot of equipment that's required uh, to be able to do that. Uh, it depends on, you know, what's, you know, what you find an interest in on this kind of stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know, and where you want to go with it. I, I don't know. It's, it's been one of these things where I, I've always kind of, uh, you know, played it as a semi, you know, part-time job to, you know, to be put on the shelf for a little while to, you know, just do what I can when I can kind yeah. of thing now so uh but do i you, want to get back to doing it yeah do you, do you find sorry. yourself um like I, in, in um in the pumpkin world and again i'm not i won't say i'm very versed in this whole thing but i know that there's uh annual shows annual you know granted it's very seasonal right i mean everyone yeah you, yeah we just finally got them so so we're, we're excited right. about being able to either be on a show or do this or that um do you find in in your world ron when it comes to uh like showcasing it, and and now again we'll, we'll flash back to pre-COVID or something because I'm sure everything's different now. Right. But when it comes right. to like, is it is it is it traveling shows or do you go to like a convention or something like that? I mean, do you able to be able to showcase it or is it or is it just purely online? I'd, I'd love to know kind of how that works. Uh, honestly, at the early 2010s, kind of building, really trying to figure out what I was doing with it. You know, I was doing a, a number of shows and things of that sort. But uh, as it went along, I basically started just doing online and, and auctioning most of the pieces uh, off of, on eBay or things of that sort, you know. Okay. And uh, that seemed to be the really the best way for me to go. Uh, some, some selling direct. I mean, there's a huge investment, uh, you know, to do a show time and money yeah. even. Right. Uh, of and, you know you got to make certain the show that you're doing is going to be worth, you know, your, your investment your time. So the uh, effort. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a lot safer bet to me, I think, uh, to, uh, to do online sales, uh, okay. to do eBay, uh, online sales and things of that sort, you know, uh, yeah. from what I do, you know, um, Interesting. Uh, but you know, uh, I mean, it's off. It's you know, it's rewarding to do shows and things of that sort. It's you know, it's nice to be in galleries and things of that sort. But you know, uh, the world, the I mean, uh, the internet world is is so much easier to kind of go. Okay, right. I you know, you've contacted me. Uh, okay, there's uh, yeah. our eBay or whatever else, and just go with that and and handle it on a right. one on one right. basis. Well, you, you bring up a, you bring up a very interesting aspect of this whole thing. Like how is it, you know, I'm going to throw it out to the group. How yeah. important is the internet to an artist now? Oh, it dude. used to be, I, I mean, huge. if you only saw stuff like in, in books or in magazines, but right now it's very instantaneous. Like, uh, you were saying how you saw our show, like yes. we were flattered that you saw our show. So, uh, the internet is now how we're all connected. So right. um, how, how important is it, is the internet to an artist now? I think it's without it, especially in the world that it is now, uh, it's, it's a, you gotta have it. You know, yeah. I can't see an artist not doing it quite honestly. Uh, you know, I, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, there were so many, uh, artists that I even know personally who would travel and, you know, you know, do the show circuits and things of that sort. Um, mm -hmm. and that was, that was their life's blood. And, uh, now not, not anymore, really. Uh, yeah, they do right. some, but they're selective of what they did. So. Right. There's more, uh, there's more money to be made picking and choosing. And like you said, you can auction things off and right. somebody from way across the planet can bid on it. Whereas right. in, exactly. instead of going around trade show to trade show and trying to actually sell your pieces, right. yeah. people come right. People, it grows trying to get it. Yeah, I, well, I follow. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ron. No, no, no. I'm just going to say that, you know, it's one of these things where you have to, uh, you know, keep that constant marketing going, even if right. you're doing shows, you know, to let them know where you're at and whatever else. So, you know, it's kind of one of those situations. So. Sorry, don't be done. No, no. I, I, I'm, <laughs> along those same lines, Ron, the, uh, when it comes to, you know, I, Paul and I got, a, got lucky and met each other. And and I yeah. you know he doesn't hate, he doesn't hate me so we've been you know <laughs> yet yet yeah a little bit <laughs> but uh but you know that the fun part for us has been now we we get on the, all these other mediums and and like these cool and we get to meet people like you and then kind of your fans get to know who we are and and like um and and, yeah. and, and vice versa and and it's just that anyway I'm. I'll pontificate and, you know, go off on a tangent, but I just think, you know, from an internet perspective and all these different platforms and you talk about marketing. So, so now it's, it's, it's less about marketing to me and more about like networking with cool ass people. I mean, oh, I'm like, absolutely. so excited, you know, to, to just get to see your process, talk you through it. But then at the same time, I, you know, it's now I, now I know, now I know you better. And I, I kind of, I don't feel as bad when I steal your stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> steal or, like an artist, <laughs> or when he has to borrow money. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> just you, Paul. Just you. Oh, okay. well, so we, so, so we have a really, we have a really great question. Uh, thank you for putting it in the chat. How many years of taking it seriously did it take you to feel like your work had become a presence in a particular niche of your field? You're talking to me, I assume. I think anybody out there. So I, I, mean, would, assume, I would assume she's talking to Ron. Yeah, yeah I think so. That's a yeah. that's a real artist. <laughs> I certainly am not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. I mean, uh, we talk about this every week. It's like you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I know from Matt and Paul. It's like they hate everything they do. So yeah. it's like, uh, uh, but when you look at their work, they they their work is exceptional. Dogs. So. Agree. Yeah, I, I, you know, and and so, I don't think we'll ever be totally be like, oh, that was really great. So, oh, look at this. This is really great. Oh, look at this. I'm so awesome. I think it's one of those uh, things that we just do. So, um, but what? How do? When did you get your confidence? I guess maybe is a a way to to put it. I mean, for myself, I'm going to, I will fully admit to understanding the Paul and uh, Matt's uh, oh, yeah. statement on that. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you never feel, I've never felt like I've made it. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a continuing struggle. You know, yeah. uh, we, I think that's important to be somewhat humble, you know, 100%. Uh, with what you do, you know. Uh, I think that's, uh, that makes it, a, I feel better about my work if I always want to strive to make it a little bit better, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, you know, no, do I, have I made it? No. Am I doing this for a living? No. Do I do this, uh, for, uh, some of my time? Yes. But, and, and, you know, I strive to, you know, I strive for a new, next goal to do more. You know, uh, so that's, that's kind of my, my take on it. So, yeah, I, um, I agree. I like, I think we, we talked, did we talk about it earlier? We talked about it yesterday. It was, um, when we, Matt and I told you what big fans we were, and you were surprised that, that we were big fans. I had, I had no idea. And it's like, you have like <laughs> thousands of people that are like, holy shit, that's Ron Free. And you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know. It boils down to somebody else should toot your horn. You can't think you're great. Somebody else should tell you you're great because then you know it's appreciated. Somebody out there appreciates your art. Right. 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 You know? Yeah. I think that's, that there's a lot of that, you know, because uh, I, I have met and know, I have known some artists that do think they're great, and, and some are. Oh, yeah. And oh, they some might be are not. To be <laughs> uh, uh, some are some are kidding themselves, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, like, yeah. uh, you know, that guy's great. Ask him. 
<laughs> He'll tell you. He'll yeah. tell you. Me, me, me. I, I, I. Uh, nice. No, I mean, nice touch, huh? Jeez. Can I? Let me, let me uh, ask you about that, Ron. You're doing a blowtorch, so tell, tell, walk with me yes. through that thought process. I mean, what happens? Uh, you start. Looks like you're starting on a nose or something like. And and I, I love to know. So is that is that just is it drying it out? Is it is it firming it up? Firming up the clay? Okay. It's firming the clay up. I could get more detail oh. out of the out of that clay by using that torch on it now. It's okay. I need it. I need it wet to form it the way I want it to. But then the details. I need it drier. Oh wow! wow. How Got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought that and was softening it up. No, no, it's absolutely taking the water away from it. At that. See, point. I would suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> like I just ruined another one. That's like the fifth one in a row. <laughs> I keep heating them up when they're when they're wet. <laughs> it's not getting softer. I put it in the <laughs> fridge. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You actually have a fridge, right, Ron? You, you like when you when you make the forms. That's where yes. you put all your old uh, or your your next step pieces, right? You, to keep them moist, cool, pliable. Right. Uh, they homogenize. I'll say uh, oh, the weird. the moisture levels in them uh, kind of kind of work the you know get to a certain point without them forcibly you know heating them or drying them. It it okay. helps kind of blend it all the way through. And this is what I did with these pieces. When I showed you, Matt, I said, yeah. here's my pumpkins. I just made them, but, I, but it, yeah. that was a couple of days ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So uh, if, they, if you pull them right off the, off the wheel, they're way too wet. Way too oh, wet. Okay. Okay. So Paul, yeah. that, you got to put that on your board and homogenize. Try to spell that one. You can't spell ogre. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, Take man. I made up a word. Isn't that something? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the questions that we get, um, I mean, at least Paul and Matt get a lot, is about their tools. So yes. uh, I wanted to share something because... Um, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, so, like, <laughs> put me to shame right here. Yeah. Like Matt, Matt, Matt and Paul went like a kid on Christmas when <laughs> they saw this, when you pulled it out yesterday. Amazing. So, you said that you have uh, a whole bunch of antique tools as well in yes. here. So that's yes. you're a collector, at not but also, you know, you have obviously modern tools. But um, right. so when did you start collecting? Uh, well, I mean, the thing that uh, kind of intrigued me is I always found that the vintage tools were better quality. Oh, or, you know, uh, especially the wooden tools that I would would able to find. I was able to find. Uh, they were just of a much higher quality, and uh, a lot of times the people, you know, selling a group of them. So it's kind of like a grab bag almost. You're like, oh, they're selling 20 tools. What's going to be in this, you know, set? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I started, you know, just trying to find bits and pieces here and there uh, uh, of old old tools that uh, that I really enjoyed. They seem to be... And I wouldn't part with them for the world, you know, because uh, yeah, they're yeah. they're part of what I do now. You know, they're part of what uh, any of my forms or are my sculpts that I did. So it's, it's so funny you say that. I, I on a, an occasion have packed up my stuff. Last year I went out to L.A. to do the sculpt for a children's hospital, and right. and i and I and I and I had to check my bag because it's got a bunch of knives and sharps in it. And apparently you can't right. take that on a plane, especially right. a number of them. Thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. So, so I, I, I had more anxiety about loading my, you know, I, I, you know, it's only been about seven, eight years that I've really been getting started getting serious about this. I, I mean, to me that they're more important to me than you know, any pumpkin ever would be, you know, it's like, and I, I wouldn't even know where to begin to start replacing him if I lost it. So I was like, right. You know, I remember, I remember talking to the gate agent. I'm like, can you put fragile on it? And can you put them, um, you know, can you give it a big hug before you put it on the plane? And, you know, <laughs> I, it, you know, put it, you know I want to walk you talking in this so I can talk to it. You know, so, you know but anyway, I, they are a part of me and I know I almost feel like Fonzie, he got his motorcycle taken apart. Um, he was flying that guy. I mean, I, I kind of know, but I feel like which ones will be the right one for this 
thing I need to do next. And I stare at it. I'm like, not that one. Not and I, yeah. I'm, I'm such a such a weirdo when it comes to like, you know, where they are. Now I'm not <laughs> organized. I look how I look at that, and I'm like, God damn it! You're just making a <laughs> I mean, my cover with so much pumpkin stuff. I empty it out at the end of the year. I don't have ants in it. You know, and more, you know, pumpkins than anything else. But anyway. Just big. I, I love that. I love that picture because it's just, you know, awe-inspiring of all those tools. It's like well, a pain thanks, in the man. Ass. I'm not gonna lie. That looks like a lot well, of work. Well, <laughs> admittingly, so I they're not organized like that all the time. They they just happen to be that way. That that for that picture, you know, got to take a picture when it's like that. You know, you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we actually. <laughs> We actually have people uh, joining us from Chicago. Uh, welcome, Steve. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, right around the corner from me and Duarte, Tracy, thank you for joining us. And we have a, a question from someone from Perry, Ohio. I love all your work. You guys rule. What are some of the first scope designs that you can remember? Now, I'm, I'm sure that is either personal or maybe ones that you saw like in your life. Personal ones would be, uh, uh, I did, believe it or not, I did little clay cats for my now wife to impress her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. but, but they were cartoony, you know, like, you know what I mean? Ron was like, I had no choice but to make it in whatever style I have inside my brain. So I made these cool little cartoon cats, like one was licking his own, uh, <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you gotta make her laugh. <laughs> but, yeah, so that, that I think that was the first thing that I that, that I ever remember sculpting, other than like Play Doh as a child, which I don't remember. I'm sure, I ate some of it. <laughs> yeah, I I'm the same way. I, I my my first memories are of Play Doh, and I have a picture. I'll, I'll I'll make sure to bring it for next for next episode. But it's this one little blue. I painted it blue for some reason. It's just thumbs for eyes, you know, thumbs in where the mouth is. But I remember staring at it and just being so proud of it as like, a, you know, second grader or something like that. And and then and then the, from a pumpkin perspective, the first thing I, I really got like, I thought that was so cool and I loved it was I found this really cool Harvard squash and I made a um, start the the Admiral Akbar out of his eyes because he had these oh, two cool. big oh. things sticking oh, out. Cool. And it, now, if I look at it now, I'm like, I almost, you know, want to smash it on the ground. But, but at this, but man, I was just over the moon about that something cool, and it was recognizable. You look at it, and you're like, oh yeah, that's Admiral Ackbar in a yeah, pump. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And and that kind of spurred me on to another thing and a devil and a you know the next things. But it does take one cool something you're proud of to help. In, in light that fire, you know. I think that for me, that was that silly a Admiral Ackbar. Yeah, the one thing that keeps you going. That's right. Like, maybe maybe I, I can get better than that. Yeah. We actually have somebody from Georgia uh, saying, "What's up, Ron? Right. T, thank you for joining us. Oh, we hey, got, T. We got awesome. the country covered tonight. Yeah. With a name like T out of Georgia, it's got to be Sweet Tea, right? Because that's, kind of <laughs> that's, yeah. oh, that's all we drink down here. <laughs> it's in our veins. It's in our veins. Yeah, uh, Joe, Joey says hello as well. Hi, Ron. You have a lot of fans out there, Ron. Oh, hey, Joey. Awesome. That's so cool. I'm You're getting some love guy. out here for my guys. All people <laughs> that I know. I know, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I think you might have been one of my first follows on like Instagram. <laughs> Being like, holy moly, that's. But back then, I'd be like, that's a guy I could steal from. Like, yeah, there's inspiration, <laughs> there's inspiration everywhere from your sketches, <laughs> sculpture, like from one to the other. I saw there's one that you did that I just love with all the teeth and the really. The really long squinty eyes. It's yeah, just this awesome crumble of teeth. Yeah, I love that one. I yeah. love that guy. Yeah. And it's like one of those things like how like to go from sketch, like beautifully perfect sketch, to finish drawing, to then put it in ceramics is mind boggling. It's like to keep it looking so straight across the board. You know, I mean that's your character all the way through. It doesn't waver at all. Like you like that's 
That's Ron. That's well, Ron's guy. <laughs> uh, sometimes I get a little disappointed in myself because I do feel like, you know, you get, you draw something and you're like, oh, wow, I'll do this in three dimension. And sometimes it just doesn't translate well, you know, and it's, it can be a, you know, a little bit disappointing, but then you kind of go off and make it something unique, you know? So, right. Uh, well, that's, it's, that's, that's the, the, uh, the journey. It's the journey. Yeah. Yeah, and the nice thing about what you 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 do as well, even though it's additive versus subtractive, like we're doing, is you can you can modify it if, if that thing you were, it was in your mind all of a sudden <laughs> isn't looking the same. You know, you can say, you know what, I right. like this nose, I like this nose kind of bent, or I like this, you know, cheek a little right. higher, you know, whatever. And, yes. And it's and, and it's the freedom to just kind of goof around with it. It's not uh, nothing set in stone. The problem I have, though, Ron, which I'm just so envious of what your medium is, is your stays around. We take a picture, I can throw it out, you know, it, it rots the minute we start cutting into it. Yours, yours stay around and they become collector's items. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and that to me well, maybe. is maybe scary. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people, you know, might drink hot cocoa out of them, but I, I, I imagine they're they're up on a wall or in a very, you know, prized place in their house you know, when they when they get it. Well, well, you know, especially. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no 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 oh, no! Please please go for it. No, no, I was just going to say, you know, like especially with uh, jug collectors, you would be surprised. Uh, you know, like the uh, the collections that some of these folks have, and you know, just amazing wow. uh, groupings of uh, uh pieces that they have on their wall you know and and to be and, and to know some of the other artists and be a part of that collection is a huge honor honestly oh that's really neat well i can tell you right now when ron finally does sell me one i will use it and i will use it with pride <laughs> and when it's not there being used it'll be on a shelf at the collector's <laughs> Same here. Yeah, but same. i will use it there, there is a really, really get to work. I, I would need to show that thing off every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> there was this really great line from uh, the original Willy Wonka movie where uh, he says, uh, Gene Wilder says, you know, the raspberries taste like raspberries. You know, the, the strawberries taste like real strawberries. The snozberries oh, taste like snozberries. <laughs> and the girl goes, there's no such thing as snozberries. And basically, you know, his his lesson afterward is like we we're the ones that dream the dream. So right. if your if your nose is crooked, so that's the way it is. That's, that's right. what I do. So we control what we want, and I think that that's that. There's a lot of power in that, and uh, but to have the ability to do it is a whole secondary thing. But um, but yeah, so it, it, that takes a lot of the pressure off having to be exact. Yeah, I think. What Mickey's saying is Ron is Willy Wonka. Ah. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Some heavy shit right there. Exactly. <laughs> I'm the Michael, I'm the Michael <laughs> Scott Willy Wonka. <laughs> That's better. So how, how you coming along there, Matt? Let me see. Oh, wow. All right. You're a fast worker. Look at that nose. So I got, he's got a little problem here, and then he's got some offset goofy eye. I wanted to make sure he's an ogre, right? So, so I, I'm, I'm tinkering around with uh, how he's going to eventually look. He's not happy. He's sad, um, and I'm trying to get that, that expression going. Um, what I'm finding with this pumpkin, and it's just it's, – it's carving so soft. It's almost like cantaloupe. It's like, uh, it's like this wet – I don't have to spray it. So this is one – if you look at the top – Came with this like beautiful dark green color, and then if you turn it, it, it goes fades into this color here. This is one I picked uh, myself with these own two hands, um, <laughs> and, I, and, and it's, um, it's still green and very um, fresh. And I've been you know coveting it and looking at it a lot lately, and uh, excited to carve it. But it's, it's a really strange texture. It's not that really firm, you know, hard pumpkin. To, it, it's a little spongy. So I'm, I don't know, you know, each one's different. Each one's going to have its limitations or, 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 or uh, lack of them. Um, and so it's um, but it's coming along. It's coming along. I don't know exactly where it'll go. That looks great. It does look nice. 
Oh, ah, you got there, Paul. Ooh. Well, Paul's on the big screen. I'm still working on form. And uh, similar to what you were saying, I thought this guy would be a little bit thicker. I'm not as I'm not too deep, but if I don't know if you can see that, but when I read a little trampolini there, yeah. see the see you can see how wet it is. Yeah, yeah. It's really soupy. I mean, which is usually a good thing, but I, I can feel it moving. So like this side's okay, but I've cleared a little more from this side, so I know I don't have too much more I can go. So right now I want to just get those wrinkles in an org. I'm not carving a, <laughs> I'm carving an org. It's a new being. Dot I'm org. Them out. Dot, a dot org. This is a dot. Yeah, that's this guy's <laughs> name, dot. So I'm gonna put a couple of teeth. Oh, look at this. Wow. Orgy. Look at that. Amazing. See, we, we stopped talking to Ron for five seconds. And he, and he, I know. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Good lord, that is so good. Oh. But I love it. I love the uh, I love the expression already. You can see the uh, yeah. It's can you can you hold it to the camera one more time? I just want to take a another gander. Yeah, yeah look so, at that expression. That is crazy cool. That's so super cool. Yeah. So do you, do you have a lot of go to expressions that you know? Because we talk about this a lot. There's a lot of go to expressions if you just want to just do something faster. I I mean I like I like. The grumpy kind of stuff like yeah. uh, you know the lips yeah. stuck out you know uh uh most of my i mean they're either extremely happy or kind of really upset or you know yeah you know mad or somewhat you know those uh -huh. are my two kind of go-to expressions that i like to do you know um, i'm with you i think they're the best ones yeah the, the one where they're just um the ones that are super duper happy, they, they look demonic to me. I mean, in my in my skull, <laughs> yeah. like you know, like that, I I I'm I have the most trouble doing a very pleasant face. They're all they're always disturbed <laughs> in a lot of ways. So yeah, that's not easy. So super Usually. super expression, you know, would would be you know pretty easy. How like no expression would that be technically harder? Eh, I don't think so. No? No expression is just basically walking through an anatomy book and just connecting point A to point B. It's when you've got to pull the muscles around and really sell what's going on in the face, I think it's tougher. Oh, maybe that's okay. me. Yeah, my, I mean, for me, it's kind of like, uh, I don't feel like it's me or something that I would do if it doesn't have, like, some sort of extreme example. I agree. Yeah. A lot of times. Well, I guess I somewhat. You know, well, that kind of like, exceptions. It, it kind of feels like what I was saying. It just feels generic. Like it yeah. feels like something you would draw uh, or sculpt out of a book because you followed instructions on how to, right? You know, right. put the mouth below the nose and. <laughs> yeah. Do you run it? Do you have a favorite piece of yours that you've that you've like you know, not sold or not gotten rid of because you just like it too much? Have you ever done that? That's a good question. No. <laughs> no. Move on, get rid of it. Everything's for sale. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of it for me. It's kind of like I make them to sell them, and then okay. you know, I and, and sure, do I? Well, I I do more of my illustrations. I'll say that I I've hung some of those on my walls, so I do okay. uh, I do that more than like the pottery sculpture end of it. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. that's. That's and I do love your illustrations, man. Yeah, yeah. And illustrating versus drawing. Look at that. <laughs> that is killer. So, so do, do you uh, do you, you kind of go to different modes? Sometimes you want to sculpt, sometimes you want to draw, or is it just kind of just as the moment strikes you? Uh, definitely, there's times I want to draw. I mean, in the afternoon where I don't want to get everything out, that's ah. when I really want to you know, to kind of just sit there with my sketchbook and spend some time with it. And, yeah. and you know, I like to do that. Uh, I will say that financially, I've not been as successful at selling 2D work as 3D work. So uh, I do invest more in the 3D work uh, as far as that goes. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I really enjoy doing the uh, illustrations. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That is so great. 
so, yeah, recently there was like the National Batman Day. I saw a ton of really cool stuff out there. That's just <laughs> very appropriate. <laughs> so cool. So, Mickey, I have a question for you, and this probably goes for anybody that's interested that watched last week. Um, where is your car? It's sitting in my uh, refrigerator right now. I can actually pull it out if you'd like. Yeah, I want to see it. I actually did work on it. Um, I got totally diverted, but I can I can go get it. Yeah, sometimes life tends to get in the way of you. Then that's uh, it, it sucks being an adult. Yeah. I love that thing firing up. It's awesome. I have another one that I use when I use the pottery wheel itself. So oh, that's really? part of the process. Yeah. See, they didn't it's show a... that in Ghost. There was no um, <laughs> there was on the pottery wheel. There was, there, I mean, there was some heat. There was no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we weren't really focused on anything uh, flammable. <laughs> the role, yeah, the role of the torch will be played by Demi Moore. So. Exactly. <laughs> So let me uh, solo me. So it did. Mm. I, d I did. Oh, whoa. Nice. Looks like a, that could be a change holder right there. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. I did experience going through right Very here. Nice. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, that was a, a coming of age uh, in the sculpting world, right? But so, it, you know. It looks right though. I mean, because it, it, you know, it's it's the, it's the scar. So you know, that, if you're going to come through, that's the place to do it. Exactly. So I tried to get like the sunken cheeks. It, it's dried out tremendously. So even though I had water on it, but I I definitely tried to you know, I found I was like going in and and putting in the um, the the more more of the detail and stuff like that. But um, I, I, the one thing that I'm I am struggling with is where to stop. Never. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about it before. <laughs> when you're yeah. satisfied. Yes, when you stop satisfied. when you can't take any more. Yeah. So yeah. Um, again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not super satisfied with the mouth, but even though it's, it, it's, it's there, but it's like, you know, I'm not advanced enough to kind of flush out the idea of what I'm trying to do. Um, but I really liked getting into the texture of the cheeks. I don't know if you, you can, yeah. you know, just getting yeah, it in great, there buddy. and stuff like that. But, but Mickey, that nose. Is, is yes, it's awesome, out of the park, dude. That's nice. you're already. That's uh, that's uh, for, for for this being your second sculpt. Hey, America, this is Mickey's second sculpt. This, this <laughs> nice. Tell you, like, if you if you keep at it, I mean, this is number two. Can you imagine number three, four, and five? I, mean, this is, I can't this wait. Is yeah, I yeah. can't did wait. Call, did you just call this carving a number two? That's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's his backhanded compliment to me. Really. <laughs> <laughs> family show but i love I, I mean i try to do what paul did is like those the, the little hood where you know where you, you get in behind it and give it that detail i mean yeah. i thought that was i mean that's what i'm learning from all this is you know jumping in but the stuff that i see that you guys do it's like taking it i go oh yeah you should do this and you know just getting underneath that that brow and 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 uh but i notice that you know i obviously know the things that i really want to work on are you know how complex the mouth is and yeah. i've heard it like like hands and eyes are super more complex than people give it credit for um mm -hmm. i'm gonna actually show a picture here of um you know Let's see what Ron does with eyes. Let me see if I can uh, get to it um, because he has it down. But thank you so much for, for the encouragement. I, I love getting, you know, being thrown in the deep end and you having to work it. myself out of it. Funny, I think you did a great job on that. It's nice. Thank you yeah. so much. But here's what Ron does with eyes. So it's like, you know, even though they seem really simplistic. <laughs> that picture is fantastic. <laughs> Ron, which one is you? I, I don't know. <laughs> That's one with and without skin. So. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> nice skin. Can I wear it? <laughs> a little bit. So thank you in the comments for all the nice words. I, I, I said I, I never expected to do any of this stuff, uh, and it's, I mean, I'm loving it. I, 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 nice. It's so much fun. You're doing a great job, man. Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Let's say what's up to Jimmy Bell. 
Halloween yeah. one. Yeah, man. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we, oh, we yeah, have so many people watching. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I also, I thought it was really interesting that you, uh, the, where did you get the dental um, teeth there? Or is that something oh, that I you just acquired? Make, no, I acquired that. That's a vintage, uh, you know, dental mold. I, I have a few of them just for reference, you know. Uh, you know, just kind of remember how it looks, you know, uh, when I'm installing others. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, the te teeth are so much fun and so much work. Um, yes. They're, they're, uh, they're, it's like the, I've heard this before, you know, when you, when you start doing scales, of teeth, when you start doing hair, feathers, scales, teeth, you know, things, uh, tentacles, like you're, 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 just, you're just basically saying, I'm, I'm going to be here for a lot of time here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Matt. Yeah, I I gotta be the one to say it. Your your mic's rubbing on your shirt, bud. Mine is. Yep, it's rubbing on your shirt. Oh, it's not, not moving. It sounds a little windy. All right. Is that better? Yes. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Well, look at that. I learned something today. Production. Production I've, got a, I've got a windy uh, shirt. I've got a <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is Hollywood, guys. You know, it's like I'm. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the fly. You know. Well, thank, thanks for keeping me honest, there, Paul. No, I just wanted to make sure I could hear your beautiful voice, buddy. I was just being, it? being <laughs> the, the sound of the wind. But you're back. It sounds you great. Beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, yeah, you're just my, you're my nose breathing or something. And here's some you know, more of like your 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 2D work is amazing. It's crazy good. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so much depth to it, and it's like you know, you worked in uh, are these watercolors that you worked in uh, there as well, or markers. That's those are inks. Those are acrylic inks, wow. actually. Wow. Uh, wow. That you see there, but I do obviously there's a there's a pin uh, to go along with that, and. Uh, then I just drop in the acrylic inks behind that. So, it, well, that one is pencil. I'm sorry, it's pencil and pen. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I enjoy it. You know, and, and a lot, as I said, even with the colors, I try to do a similar. You know, mm -hmm. with my t 3D work, even you know, mm -hmm. uh, layering colors is a big deal to me. Obviously, you don't have to even fire it. That's <laughs> that's 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 the nice part about it you know one day i'll get to i'll i'll get to a point that i can sell my 2d work so uh you know that's uh, i hope one day let's put it that way so so you actually have tackled a butternut squash ron so like I it's have. the only yeah, one yeah. i could, i found <laughs> that's yeah that's my uh pretty much well i have done a pumpkin but it was like on the fly kind of thing. And it was not it to my satisfaction. Let's put it that way. But, uh, I, this was fun. Oh, this was fun. I, I enjoyed, I, I actually did the, um, potato eyes with a, a carrot, uh, portion, uh, inside the pupil. And, uh, actually the teeth are ceramic. So I incorporated <laughs> some ceramic work See, with, with that as well. And I did, I did paint some of that as well because i liked yeah i just wanted to drop some color in there you know here and there so. yeah yeah when i, I when I, I i never got good at the painting thing i when i was on the food network it was like it, that was yeah. the, kind of the requirement is you're going to be doing some painting and ah. and i i never got really good at it or, or really liked it a lot myself yeah but right. but the folks the folks who do it really well i i'm just like I, I got to be around people who are extremely good airbrushers and and um, right and and once you were really good at it, it was just magical to watch. That's cool. I've never been great with the airbrush. I, I, I must admit, uh, mine's all brush paint. You know, on there, it probably looks crude on there as well. So, do you do you brush paint um, when you're doing? Oh, each of you just over Halloween. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. That's so nice. That's my Aunt B. Look at that. We got the whole family here. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, got a, I got a strong support group in my family. Yeah. I love it. We actually have a, a question for you, Paul, after your uh, thought, Matt. Well, yeah. Go ahead. 
That's right. My thought is over. So, Paul, how long does it take you to do a nice sculpt on an average sized pumpkin beginning to end? I'll let you know when I actually do one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, something that I'm happy with on a nice sized pumpkin, if you're on a nice sized pumpkin, like a 30 pounder, 40 pounder, something about two feet high, about 18 inches wide. Um, four to five hours because I've learned from, I've taken the advice of other artists and I'd walk away for about a half hour and kind of collect my thoughts. I step yeah. away from it, take a break, wrap it up, keep it moist, and then I'll go back. So if I'm including that time, about four or five hours. And then I get to take a picture of it downstairs and look at it the next day and then go, is that mold? Oh, I got to get it out of my house. <laughs> Good thing I got those photos. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh, I, got big, I got big fat chickens though. They love pumpkin. <laughs> so uh, a very satisfactory answer. So uh, he needed to hear that. So yeah, he or she? I'm not even she, sure. It's that, she. I, yes, she. 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 Very she. Enough. Excuse yeah. me. Yes. It, it, and you know what? Take your time. If it takes you longer. Go back at it the next day. There's no need to rush it. I used to rush them and try to finish them in one sitting. I think we talked about this with Ray, didn't we, Matt? Yeah. And Ray, Mickey, yeah, we, we did. We, we touched on this, how it would be. I gave myself a time limit. And I think we talked about this earlier, too, is when are you done? Mm -hmm. you know, it, you're never done. You're done when you can't take any more creative process. But if you, if you get to a good point, and leave it alone and go back later, even the next day, you'll spend another a lot of amount of time. You might be in something eight or nine hours. I know, I think Ray does that. Ray loves to go back the next day and tackle it again and, and do like another layer of, you know, he'll do another vegetable on it and he just does this, all this awesome stuff until he's like, there's nothing more I can do with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's the same with Dean Arnold, Paul. I remember he, 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 had, a, he had something where he and plug 10 hours into a you know butternut squash yeah and, you know so you're talking about something relatively small but you can refrigerate it come back to you know there's there's a time limit at some point but um yeah i'm i'm the same way and paul I, i've been taking that advice too about walking away and coming back i'd be interested to see if ron does that because you get such a different perspective after you leave and come back and look at it again and you're like oh my god those eyes suck or, or look at that why why didn't i see that nose or something? whatever right right you do thing ron on, on like uh kind of doing the walk away come back thing because you're just taking the day or two, you know oh yeah uh well i'll what i'll do is a lot of times i'll uh get to a certain point and then say okay that's enough for today let me see where else i can go with this and then i'll just put it away in the fridge you know, and then come back and look at it. And not only that, but the more and more details I want to add, I find that if I try to do it all in one day, it's just not as good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You have to. You have to take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel cool. like I rush it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you try to cram it all in, and if you go back the next day, then your focus is detail instead of. You know, yeah. getting all of you take focus on right. The what am oh, I yeah. carving? This is a uh, red curry, which I think is a small red Hubbard. Red the the large red Hubbards I guess are really hard to find. Fortunately, these small red Hubbards I think they I think it's yeah it's called a curry, K U R I, and um, there's plenty of these right now in my supermarket. And as you can see, it's not very not very big. Uh, super duper wet, so. Full of liquid. So is that whole top part um, solid? Like uh, I mean, I guess not the whole top. Right? Is it solid like a butternut up there? It feels like it. I don't have any intention of finding out. <laughs> but, I mean, I wonder where the pocket is. I guess it's that circle in the middle I'm looking at there. I mean, well, I would assume that to right about the eye socket area is going to be solid, right? Yeah. And then you're going to hit a, a void down here. But down here, it's really thick. I mean, this thing's super duper moist. I. If I squeeze it hard enough, I could probably get it to drip. Oh, wow. So it's, it's been nice. I mean, I'm almost spraying it out of habit at this point. I don't, it doesn't really need to be sprayed. I'd be curious to see. 
call me Krazel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you Can you pick up any tricks of trade behind the scenes of owning your art studio? You know, from, from my experience on Food Network, um, you know, one thing I walked away with that was that I didn't really carve a lot of pumpkins. I, it was, I was like more of a, uh, a carpenter. I, I was doing all kinds of stuff with different, uh, different stuff. Um, the thing I walked away from that thing was just what a bunch of cool people to work with. And I'm still friends with a ton of them. And I mean, that's, that's kind of the best part of the whole thing at the end of the day is, uh, is having, uh, you know, uh, like this little small community of really cool carvers that you can, you know, bounce questions off of. It's uh, it's kind of a safe, fun place. So, anyway, that's my two cents on Food Network. Right. Um, well, I guess uh, my turn. Um, I never aspired to do anything, you know, beyond what I'm what I'm doing right now is a bonus to me. So, I I knew I was going to be carving pumpkins, and I realized that social media was a fun place to post them, so that all my friends and family could see them. And it really snowballed from there. This I never had intention of doing anything other than carving pumpkins at Halloween for the kids, you know, posting up for friends on Facebook and Instagram. So when they reached out for me to do uh, the show last year, it was sort of like for uh, just for kicks. Wow, look at that! Who knew I I could act, I they might I could have a chance of winning. It. Mm -hmm. And then like Matt was saying, everybody that I've been on that show is so cool. The same, for it's cut from the same cloth of just, hey, look at this is just what we do. We just like have fun and have fun. And you know, people want to, people want to watch us do it. So I, I, the biggest thing I took from it is just be cool. <laughs> everybody, everybody I've met is super, super cool. I'm going where it takes me, you know, you, you ride the wave. Everybody be cool because of rubbery. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Super complimentary. Thank you for watching. We we appreciate yeah. you watching us. Yeah. So Ron, don't listen. Nobody's watching us. Nobody's watching. Well, oh, here's yeah. a good question. <laughs> how, how how did you guys uh, actually get those gigs? I didn't. I, I kind of just touched on it there. Somebody reached out to me for, from one of the producers from the show reached out and asked if I would be willing to go on the show. And it was kind of, okay, sure. Yeah. Send me, the, send me the, the information. I, I do a show in Chicago every year. And, and I just, as long as it didn't interfere with that, that was all good. Because I've been doing that show for so long. It's like you have, I have loyalty to certain things. You know, I, I wouldn't dump, I wouldn't dump something that's, that those are my first professional game. So I've always had loyalty to that. That show. That's, that show's still on, right, Paul? Yeah, on. I'm still going to Chicago. Yeah. That's nice. Great. Yeah, I'm excited for it. It's a great show at the Chicago Botanical Garden. Well, when, when, when do you go there? When, when do you head out? Um, I want to say the third week of October. Yeah, so the week before Halloween is is the I'm, I'm out there for the second week, and um. Yeah, it's a good time, man. It really is. Matty, I got to get you on the gig next time. Yeah, you know. You know, you're not busy with other things. Matt, who is your inspiration? Oh, my beautiful niece. This is all in the family. I love this girl. Maeve, uh, my inspiration for what I'm carving now is, <laughs> was found in this mirror right here. I just did this. <laughs> so I'm becoming... <laughs> I become most of my inspirations. And then luckily I have this terrible uh, problem with my eyes not being in the same plane. So <laughs> this guy's got the same issue. But uh, yeah, no, it's totally my face, Dave. Uh, but just I, I've taken some liberties. Not much, though. I mean, honestly, like looking in a mirror. He's it got really as much is. hair as I do. That's cool. <laughs> So Paul, did you were you able to bring you you were able to bring your you own a tools? Connection to issue going on right now. Do you do? Are you off? Are we off? Something's going on. Damn internet. I'm, I'm here. When yeah, will we're, we're they still perfect alive. this internet? Um, were you were able no, to bring your own tools internet. to outrageous pumpkins? Yes, that was that was a big thing. 
um, you had to be able to fit all your tools in one of those storage bins, you know, the average size storage bin, whatever, mm. like that two footer is. And then they they came to your hotel room and actually inspected it before you could go to set. And that included oh, wow. any any animatronics you were going to use, all your tools, all your supplies. Like you know, people had you know your lighting. It all had to fit in one bin because it had to be an even playing field of equipment that people had. Oh, how interesting! Hmm. So if you brought a broomstick, you were shit out of luck because it ain't fitting. In, it ain't wow. fitting in the bin. You had to leave it behind. So everything had to fit in that bin. So, hmm. Yeah, there's some quirky little rules, but I don't have any tools to be honest with you. This this tool right here was what I used in the final round just about the entire time. I have that whole pump this one too. And it survived. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Wrong Great. Way. Great old triangle tool set. One of like three tools that have survived. <laughs> the rest of them snapped in half and beat them up pretty good. Paul, I looked at the clock just now and, and, a, and a little tiny tear ran down my cheek because it's 10, we only had 10 minutes left. Fly and, by. Uh, I know. I, Ron, how many times did I say this thing goes by too fast? Um, yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? We, I mean, I, it's like if the cameras were off and we just sat and hung out for, um, you know, this time. <laughs> I, first of all, I'd probably have four more beers and not be able to finish anyway. But um, <laughs> I'd love to see where if we get a little progress check, maybe. Want to do? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do progress check. We, with it, with the time we have left, which is again very very short, we can do a little quick <laughs> progress check. So, uh, oh, I go Matt first. He's the one that brought it up. All right. I don't want to show mine, but all right. We can do mine, I guess. What advice right. do we have for future? So, so this is my my version of. Oh, he went really fast, man. Really, really fast. Yeah. He, he, he's going to be an ogre at the end of the day. Um, I'm thinking about doing some work on him somewhere. Um, anyway, um, I like it. And I got I got to get these eyebrows. I, I, right now, his eye his eyelids are super heavy, but I'm gonna pull all that back and then. But I'm just nervous because look, Paul, look at this. I can like. Yes! Wow! wow. And that's a fresh pumpkin too. Yeah, see that? Right. So I'm like I'm. If I go much deeper, I'm 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 in no man's land. I'm a little nervous. That's that unpredictability of of pumpkins as opposed to the butternut squashes. And boy, oh boy, did we carve a lot of butternut squashes in the in this quarantine. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Tom, let me answer your question real quick. What is the best advice you have for any future pumpkin competitors? Well, first, don't tell people you're going to be a pumpkin competitor. You're going to keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and two, have fun. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. It's so good for you. You'll get tense. You'll, you know, you won't, you won't think clearly. Enjoy it because everybody, if you are on a show, you're going to love everybody that's on the show. Everybody in this small little niche. Is that a word? Niche of people that we carve with. Everybody gets along. Everybody shares tips and tricks. If you're going to be carving bigger pumpkins, my, uh, what I was told by the judges was get bigger tools. Now, I didn't really listen to their advice on that because, like I said, this regular one you can get at Michael's or AC Moore or any of those craft stores. I carved the entire pumpkin and the around with this one in the allotted amount of time. I find bigger tools kind of uh, cumbersome. I'm not used to using them. I've, I've tried out a couple of bigger rigs, but stick stick to your stick to what you know. Have fun and just be creative. You know, let the let the let the ideas flow. Yeah, my my only advice would be content. Just keep keep cranking out as many as you possibly can. I on my right. little side, I've got a, hundreds of pumpkins over the years I've done. And when I have a, a down moment and I and I get inspired, I go find some. You know, take a couple hours and do one. And the more you do, the better you feel about your capability. And then when you get into a competition, you're like, these guys all suck. I got this. And now, I don't think that way. But <laughs> Not you. In your life, it helps, <laughs> it helps <laughs> you to, uh, to, to, from a competitive standpoint, it helps you to kind of weather the, the nerves, you know? Yeah, you're right. And, and Matt, just so we're clear, did you say you have a couple hundred pumpkins over the course of a year or of over, over a week? Because I'm pretty sure you post like 70 to 80 pumpkins a week. Yeah, I, I you know content. I, know I, I I get I get inspired and I'll go do one, and next thing you know, it'll be 
you know, I don't know what, but I just add it to the thing and, and if people like it, they like it. If not, I just sit and cry in the corner and I'm good. Right. So yeah, that's not that's nice. How, how our work. Make sure you like right. math stuff. I don't want them getting sad. <laughs> so let me, I, I, let's see yours, Paul. Come on. What? Mine's still, I'm still working on mine. I'm not fast like you. You've been, oh, I love the teeth. Oh, damn well, it. I didn't have teeth. Yeah, but you're going to do warts, so. All right, I'll do warts. You're, yeah, but you're doing an ogre. I'm doing an org. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new, that's a new thing. A dot org. Yeah, dot org. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do is, to, I'm going to take my own advice, which is I might actually rough this out where I like the, the shadows and the forms and stuff, which I still have a lot to do, and then maybe walk away and, you know, come back in like an hour or something and see if I have a different set of eyes on it to do the detail. Maybe maybe his eyes will be closed. Maybe he'll have a tear coming out of his eyes. Maybe he'll be, you know, I, I, I need to walk away to kind of digest it a little bit after I get all the all the forms down. Yeah. That's where I'm so, at. Right. So, so what do you got, Ron? Ron? Let's see, let's see our let's see our special guest here. Uh well it's no eyes yet. So uh, wow. Oh wow. That, is cool. dude. that is so good. <laughs> That's all I can hear. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah Isn't that stuff. insane? I mean, and this is guys, this is an hour and a half, roughly. And most of the time we were bugging him, so he, he couldn't even he couldn't even create. <laughs> I know. We're trying to distract him by asking his life story. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. So do you have an idea for color? I mean, it pops into your head, or do you, what are you thinking? Flesh tone? What are you thinking? Uh, to complete it, you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what, what goes to your head from like, because uh, uh, I know you're going to potentially you know, get them all, all glazed up. What, what's your thought in, in as far as the color for that guy? Ooh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, I'm jumping ahead of the process. Sorry. Uh, I'll let you know yeah. what color I want it because I want you to sell it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I can see him being a little bit flesh, a little bit flesh, uh, but with a maybe a greenish tint. Oh, sort. I love that. I love that. You know, that's going to be cool. uh, orky, orky skin tone. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm thinking. He, he looks a little apish right now, but, uh, you know. Uh, oh, I, like I like it a lot. He, he's phenomenal. I, love, I mean, the, the wrinkles around the mouth and the, and the expression already is just, just killer. <laughs> and if you guys don't like follow, if you don't follow Big Duluth, if you don't follow Ron Free, then shame on you. You guys, this is, uh, this, is this guy's amazing. Yeah, we didn't even get to go uh, take a tour through his studio. So we'll definitely have to have you back at some point. Uh, That'd be cool. And uh, we can go through this again. I mean, I'm sure that there's so much more to yeah. talk about. I mean, like uh, yeah, asking what all this uh, machinery is uh, to make all of your uh, amazing wow. work. Uh, Dr. But, Frank's lab there. Yes. <laughs> And as we said, uh, the Big Duluth is on Instagram. Is there anything else, anywhere else that we can find you? Uh, I'm on Facebook as well as the Big Duluth Creative Studios. Uh, and, and I'll say this. People will ask me all the time, why am I called the Big Duluth? Because uh, my last name is free. And free art probably doesn't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that is perfect. That is yes. so fun. People would like to get it for free, but it is yeah. not free. I could free hear art. the jokes that already, free. so that's 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 the whole purpose behind that. That is a hundred percent a marketing so move. Fun. So wait, I got a question for you, Ron. Um, so yes. When you, uh, I, saw, I saw some of those in the. Again, I'm, I might take us past the the hour and a half, but when it, when it comes to like the extruder and all those things like that, yes. Do you have this? Do you have this set up kind of in your in your house as your own? physical studio where um you know you you can yeah because i saw the, the background there you've got some of the pieces that you're working on it or in progress pieces and stuff like that up on the shelf right you look and i know you said you weren't that organized except but then i look at your studio i mean yeah you are so uh <laughs> I can't it there. um but is, I, is that everyone full oh yeah you got everyone full is, is that all just yeah. set up in your in your house in your own studio uh, yeah, actually, I when we built this house, we never intended for it to put cars in the garage. So uh, 
all that was converted to uh, space oh, nice. for the for my pottery and uh, my office that I share in here. Well, the office inside the house is meant to really sculpt in and illustrate. So I got a oh. I got two spaces actually that uh, I mean because basically if the kiln's running and all that it needs to be far away because of the fumes and things of that sort. So yeah, a little bit of heat. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's not well, as bad. Baby. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, on the outside. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mick Frazzle stash gave us an incredible compliment. Thank you for being incredibly wholesome and inclusive. I feel like I have found a band of compatriots. Uh, he asked, uh, or he or she, I, I, I don't know what the, what the screen names, um, well, the they ask, uh, may I still tag my work if I was carving a pumpkin while you were, were, and didn't do a sad ogre. No, please. Uh, we would definitely would like to see all of your work and, Anything that you're um, inspired to make from this, we definitely would love to see. 100%. Yeah. And thank you very much. Thanks for yes. sticking around with so us. So many people with their nice words. But, um, well, thank you, Ron, for joining us. Uh, it has been oh, a, it our a pleasure. pleasure completely. Yeah. And um, your work is incredible. And we look forward thank to seeing you. the finished piece um, because it's going to be in Paul on Paul's uh, <laughs> desk here pretty soon, I'm sure. Hey, hey, he, he auctions it. I'm going to go hire a bidder. Oh, I'm I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm in <laughs> Well, we are here. I, I, we have we decided yet? Well, I mean, we're we're coming close to Halloween. So, are we going to have our march to Halloween? Or we haven't really discussed it. I mean, we've been talking about it, but we haven't made any dis, uh, decisions. Should we, um, should we set a date for uh, an, an announcement of, of what stuff we're going to do? Or we'll talk about it after we get off the Ooh, air and maybe make foreshadowing. A dun dun dun. Team uh, meeting. There, there is some really cool stuff happening, and and um, and Ron, we we swear that if you if you could come back, because we want to have kind of a, a large gathering of of sculptors, awesome. and, and do another final spin at some point, maybe before sure. Christmas, maybe uh, Christmas. My Christmas is Halloween, so maybe right. before Halloween. Oh yeah, mine too. But if, yeah, but if but either way, um, we we couldn't we couldn't be happy en to ha enough to have you back on a show like that where we get a ton of really cool sculptures on, on here, and you'd certainly you what you showed us tonight just knocked our socks off. So it'd be it'd be great oh, to have you back wow. here for it. No, it's no, gonna look I'd, so beautiful. It'd be my pleasure. That'd be cool. <laughs> so we got we got, uh, we got a hello to Ron there, Doug Stan Stanett. Doug St Stanett oh, wow. came in late, uh, nice. but hello to Ron. Hello. All right, so that is our show for today, uh, Carvers and Creators. Uh, we are here every Thursday, 4 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Ron, it has been a pleasure. Paul, Matt, thank you so much. This has been a tremendous journey of artistic uh, endeavors, and uh, it gets better every, every week. And um, and I'm looking forward to the, our, it said, like Matt said, our Christmas, which is Halloween. So we have, we have big plans for it. And... <laughs> So many other things that we can't wait to tell you about. So um, with that, we will say uh, good night, and we will see you next Thursday. Take care. Thank you, Ron. Thanks.